Hi everybody, it's Stephanie. Today I am making an elegant topsy-turvy cake that has just a little bit of spookiness to it. Also, I got these really stylish sketchbooks from my friend Koali Pops that I really wanna show you all. So let's get started. Before I start the whole cake making process, I'm going to sketch out my idea in my new fancy sketchbook. These books are so cute and will come in handy when a cake idea pops into my head. You can buy these on Amazon, the link is below. Also, I'm giving one away over on my Instagram, so be sure to check that out. The first step in making this cake is the baking process, and here is what I have already baked. So starting with the largest tier, these are the 9 inch and 10 inch round cakes, and the middle tier is a 7 inch and 8 inch, and then the top tier will be a 5 inch and 6 inch round cake and they're going to get stacked up just like this. Let's prepare the cakes. So I'm going to start with the largest tier, which is the bottom tier. This one is the nine inch cake and it is getting cut the normal way. So I'm just leveling the top to make it flat on the top and then I'm cutting through the center just like always. The trick to making this look wonky is cutting the next cake, the 10 inch, at an angle. So level the top so it's flat on the top and then begin cutting this cake at an angle so that you kind of have two wedges of cake. And once it's cut, you flip that top piece over and lay it back down and that is how we get that wonky look. And then repeat the same cutting process on all the cakes. It's always scary cutting a cake like this. So just go slowly, and it's always helpful to use a knife to score it on both sides so you know where to cut. Each cake is going to need its own board to sit on. So these are my boards, and they are 9 inch, 7 inch, and 5 inch cardboard cake circles. Filling the cakes is a very easy process, and all are done the same. So you start by placing the smaller cakes on the cake board, and then you pipe a buttercream dam around it, and then you fill it completely with buttercream frosting. Continue stacking and filling the cakes with buttercream, and make sure those purple wonky cakes are on the top. Once they are filled with buttercream frosting, cover them up in plastic wrap and then pop them into the refrigerator to chill. The cakes are cold now, which is going to make it a lot easier to carve. So I wanna just carve off just a little bit of cake around the sides. I'm wanting it to have more of a straight side instead of a curved side. So I just trim that up a bit, and then once I'm happy with the shape on all the cakes, I then give them a crumb coat. A crumb coat is the first layer of frosting, and what happens is when you put that on, it picks up all those crumbs on the outside of the cake. So get that on there, it doesn't have to be perfect, and then pop it back into the refrigerator to chill again. The second coat of frosting is when I start trying to perfect the buttercream. I'm using an offset spatula and my icing smoothers to smooth that out, and then it goes back into the refrigerator to set up. The third and final coat is when I really try to perfect the frosting. You want to spend lots of time here trying to get that sharp top edge. So use this icing scrapers or a hot offset spatula to get those very sharp looking. And once I was happy with them, they go back into the refrigerator to chill. Before I can cover the cakes in fondant, I need to create a well in the bottom two tiers. So I have a parchment paper circle that is the same size as the cake that will sit above it. It is a five inch circle for this one and a seven inch circle for the bottom tier. And next I'm tracing the circle with my knife and I'm going slightly outside the parchment paper circle and this will give me a little bit of extra space to account for the fondant. And then start cutting out that circle of cake. The point of cutting out this well is to give the cake above it a flat surface to sit on. If you skip this step, I feel that it is slightly risky, so just to be safe, I always create the well. Now that we have the well cut out, I am adding a thin coat of buttercream right inside of it, then pop it back into the refrigerator again to chill. The fondant is up next, and all three of these are going to get covered in fondant, so I like to dust my surface with cornstarch before rolling out the fondant, and then once I have it rolled out, I drape it over my rolling pin and then I unroll it carefully onto my cake. You have to be really quick and run your hands along that top edge to keep it from tearing and then I work on smoothing out the fondant. The fondant that I'm using today is called Satin Ice 
which I really do love, but sometimes it does tear on me. So before I started, I mixed in about 15% of modeling chocolate, and I think that made it a little bit more forgiving, and I was also able to blend in any mistakes. Cut away the excess fondant around the bottom of the cake, and then also remove the fondant inside the well. Let's move on to the fun part, the decorating. I wanted to keep the decorations pretty simple and easy on this one. So the first step is airbrushing the bottom tier in black airbrush color. This airbrush is made by Copy Cake. I don't use it that often, but it has held up for 10 years. So it's a pretty good one. And then I'm also airbrushing the top tier in violet airbrush color. Next, we're going to move the cake over onto the board. So I am attaching my cake to the board with melted candy melts. Tiered cakes need dowels. So I am using plastic straws, but you could also use wooden dowels if you prefer. Insert them into the cake and then cut them down to the same height as the cake. When I'm stacking cakes like this, I always get in a really big rush. And this time I was picking up the cakes with my hands and moving them into place. So when you do it, I would like you to do it slowly and carefully and use a spatula and try not to touch the sides because it does mess up the fondant. Now that the cake is completely stacked, I'm going to push a sharpened wooden dowel all the way through the cake. Use another dowel to help push it all the way down into the cake drum. Let's make some decorations. These are artificial flowers I got from the craft store. So I tried to find some real roses, but I couldn't find the right colors. So when I saw these, I immediately loved them and I'm so glad I don't have to worry about fresh roses. I'm making three small bundles of flowers and I'm winding a floral tape around them to keep them secure. And then I also trimmed the stems down just a bit. The last decorations are the chocolate skulls and bones. These are so simple. You just pour melted candy melts into the molds, then tap the mold on the counter to remove any air bubbles, and then let the candy set up in the freezer or refrigerator, and then they easily come right out of the mold. I also dusted the skulls with black food color dust to make them look dirty and old. Even though the flowers are artificial, I still don't want to push them directly into the cake. So I stuck a short straw into the cake and then I pushed the flower stems into the straw. And then I stuck the chocolate bones onto the cake with more candy melts. I think that looks so pretty. I also had a few large flowers, so I set them on the top and around the bottom of the cake. My cake was completely finished at this point and I had taken a whole bunch of pictures of it and I just wasn't liking it. I felt like the middle tier needed more color, so I decided to fix it. I got my airbrush back out and added some pink shading to the middle tier. What do you think? Do you like it the way it was or do you like it with the pink shading added? My elegant Halloween cake is complete. I really enjoyed making this one because it was just so unique and different from my usual cute style of cake making. Thank you all for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Oh, and do not forget to go check out my Instagram for a chance to win this stylish sketchbook from Quali Pops. All right, everybody. I'll see you later. Bye.